Why do we spend countless hours and dollars out in our shop working on our cars, tinkering with our boats, putting together our motorcycles? I've always been curious what it is behind all of it. So I'm gonna go out and talk to some people. And we're gonna find out why. But the majority of our big builds are all designs. So it's just like building the house. First thing you start, blueprints design, right? We gotta get a vision. So the customer will come tell us what he wants. Bring me bring me a folder, bring me a bunch of pictures, bring me a bunch of magazines, show me the wheels, like show me the cars, mm -hmm. like show me everything you like, and then we'll go from there. Um, the difference right away you can see is oh, the flare. Fender, yeah. yeah. So what we're doing, we're giving the car a different look. What's kind of like we did the Mustang a little bit, you know what? Yeah, there's been so much done to these Camaros. Like, what can you do to change them up? Kind like a 32 out? Ford. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so I look at this as being the new 33 oh, definitely. and 32 Ford yeah. car. Yeah. You know, you run LS, LS1s through LS9s in them, and then plus you can do whatever you want to them, but you know, you're talking a car basically 380 horsepower all the way up to, you can make them 2,000 horse. This is affordable where a guy like you could afford it. Um, you could build it Now I make $10 an hour. <laughs> Well, you still can find it. But anyway, the goal is to build a car, to have a car where people can buy these cars for basic kit form is going to be around $50,000. That ain't bad. No. Considering what you're going to be getting. Yeah, exactly. And that, now that includes the chassis and the body. It includes the chassis and the body and all the, the dash, the pedal assembly. But no drivetrain. No drivetrain, right. Okay. You have to buy your gunner Corvette, put your motor in there and do all that stuff. But. The rest of the stuff is basically a kit form. And so uh, it'll So you have a body, it's all tapered, all widened, floors all done to fit our chassis, everything else is just bolt right in there. Cool. Center tunnel on the firewall gets modified. But the beauty about this is, you know, a lot of people are taking C6, you know, spindles and they use the control arms mm -hmm. and all that stuff and they'll build all their own cradles. But what happens, you don't get the whole benefit. Because if you look at this design, what's going on here is the motor is moved back. The motor is basically four inches, five oh, inches off the ground. Back. So the center of gravity of the whole car is down five inches off the ground in the middle of the car. Yeah. So weight's in the middle, it's down low, it's right where you want it. Well, and plus it looks like you can tuck all your exhaust up. Yeah, it's, it's basically not. running just like it does on the Corvette. The other beauty is we can run the stock composite springs. Oh, cool. This car doesn't even have coilovers on it. Wow. So you can run them either way. You can run them with coilovers, you run a composite spring, sometimes a combination of the two. Uh -huh. If you've got a really heavy car, so I mean, it, it depends on what you want to do. And we developed these narrow control arms, we're all CNC billet. Oh. And the beauty about doing these, what we do, we narrow the track width up five inches in the front, and we narrow it up four inches in the back. That way you don't have to flare the car. Yeah, yeah. So. Now, are you guys having that stuff made here in Oregon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yep. yep. Yeah, everything's made in Oregon. It's all made right here. Wow. So and that's the beauty about that's why the chassis can work. That's the reason why we can get away with using stock cradles and all that. Your Corvette's almost too wide for any car. Yeah. 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 Track lifts are really wide, but yeah. this allows us to do it in any car. Wow. Now, the same way with the '67 Camaro. Yeah. Actually, '67 Camaro, we offer it two ways. You don't do not have to flare the car. If somebody wants a stock package, this will fit under the '67, '68 Camaros without flaring the car. Oh. So, so it does not have to be flare, look. yeah. And run these size tires, and run the stock, stock Corvette size tires underneath it. So you can still Absolutely. run huge meat. Yeah. But the ultimate thing is to, to flare them out. If you flare them out, you got a little different look, sets the car apart yeah, from yeah. the rest, so. Yeah. As a kid, I was always interested in um, how everything worked. Oh. So I was always curious how stuff was built, you know, how did they get that shape or oh. how did they make that part, so. So more along the design? side of things you were more interested or the engineering stuff? engineering mechanical stuff oh. yeah okay. yep my first customizing car was probably when i was about 14 15. i have older brothers and oh. i had an older brother that had a 55 chevy he bought cool. so um basically we restored that awesome. we did it and made it into a hot rod so we oh. did a body and paint and all that on it and, wow. and stuff so yeah um i get joy out of creating 
So I really do enjoy creating the cars. I enjoy working with the clients. Mm. Actually, I, I enjoy the challenge of having a vision and taking the client vision, trying to figure out his vision and trying to make it come to reality. So, so you're, you're in it for the challenge and also meeting new people. Absolutely. And developing those Absolutely. new relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, really, I'm really dedicated to the shop, yeah. Oh. So I'm always out here. So, yeah. Well, I had a person ask me one time, what, were you, what are you doing when you're not building cars? I said, well, I don't know. I'm always building cars. So. <laughs> Thinking about how to build a new one? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Thinking about the next project. Probably, I think probably the same way. Um, I do give my employees um, lots of freedom artistically. So, you know, I really, I'm the type of shop where I kind of want to treat the employees like I'm treated, where I know, because I've been in this business for 28 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I worked at shops and stuff like that. And really, the guys I want need to be self-motivated, they got to have talent already and they got gasoline running through their blood. So they would love cars. So basically I'm like a conductor in a band, if oh. you will. So I want to give them some freedom to do their thing. I want to check on them. I want to make sure and describe to them what we want, do the final checks, but pretty much let them run with it, run with the problem. So you really strive to build like a team atmosphere where you can depend on each component or each team member to kind of put their own Right. spin on what they're doing right like all my guys like you know i could have built this car myself probably almost all my guys could have built this car by themselves but would it have been the same quality or the same as it is now no because we have five brains going together here all keeping each other in check pushing us to that next level if you will so you know the team's very important it's a, it's a team project all these cars are really you know it's a talented group if you will so this car would have came out differently had you just built it yourself? Um, probably would have been a little different things for sure, because I wouldn't have had the input of you know, my employees too on it. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's everybody. You, know, you got the client input, you got my input, you got four other guys' input going into it. So, and including the wife's input too. Oh, really? She actually comes out and makes lots of final, you know, all those guys are working in here all the time. So I'd love to pull somebody in, like if you came in, or I'll get somebody to come out the street, hey, I'm working on this, you know, what do you think? And they'll come in and they'll see something because we've been working on the car so long, she'll see something or they'll see something that, well, what if you did this? Yeah. And you say, oh, wow, yeah, you're right, you know what? So, I, you know, I take it in. I, I really try to make a car that's pleasing to everyone and I also want to make something timeless. I think so. I think because, you know, I, you know, I want to leave a mark in the world, too, as, as much as the client does building the car, you know, I want to say, yeah, you know, that was our creation. You know, I, I was part of that team that helped create that car, you know. So, yeah, I would say it does. So would this car define you? Yeah, yeah. As far as its articulate shape and its power plant and that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Kind of describe who you are as an individual. Right. Well, yeah, I think so, because I want to be the best individual I can as far as being a person, kind to others, you know, just being, you know, part of the, the population, you know, being a, you know, part of society, you know, helping hopefully and, and doing good stuff. Same way this, I want this car to be the absolute best car it can possibly be for what it is. So I think, yeah, I think the two go together. Automotive manufacturers, obviously. Um, Anyone specific? You know, I can't save anyone. No, not really. I just, you know, because I appreciate all designs. You know, I appreciate the crazy designs all the way up to the simple designs because, you know, I, I look at the work that went into it, what it actually looks like, and just for the design of the car. You know, I mean, it's, you know, Barris. I mean, Barris stuff is out there. Oh, yeah. You know, it's crazy. Would I want to build something like that? Not necessarily, but I still respect it. What, no monster coach? Right, exactly, yeah, <laughs> you know, but you know, but look at it, it's unique. I mean, the mine, you know, the, they create all that stuff. It's just, you know, unbelievable, you know? I mean, it's, you know, I respect it. You know, I respect it all the way down to the home builder that, you know, he's building just something simple, you know? Okay, he's working with what he can work with, um, doing what he's doing, you know? Yeah. You know, Foose's design, Boyd's designs, you know, they're, let's face it, they were trend, trendsetters, you know? They had a lot of neat stuff too, so I mean, I think they all inspire me. I, I think we all kind of feed off each other, you know.
Yeah, you know, it was a memorable experience. It was actually when we were at SEMA with this one this year, George Barris came up to me and said, I need to have my picture taken with you. And that was really a kind of an honor to have him come up and do that to me. Yeah, came to the booth and said, no, I want my pictures taken with you. This took us 11,000 hours to build. Wow. And people say 11,000 hours, a lot of hours. But what we have here is basically a working concept car. So 11,000 hours is actually really, it's probably, I'm gonna say it's probably a third less than it. Oh, it should cost. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much as far as hour labor. Like, mm -hmm. There's a lot of money in the car, obviously, but um, it is what it is. Yeah. We were fortunate enough to have a client that had a vision, to share a vision with us and mm -hmm. allowed us to do it. And we are very lucky because without the right client or without a guy that has trust in you, there's no way we could ever build a car. Like you. This car weighs 3,800 pounds. Okay. Um, that's empty. So, full tank of gas, you figure about 3,900 pounds, mm -hmm. right around there. The weight distribution is um, it's 1,800 on the front, 2,100 on the back. So, dang near 50 50. Yeah. Or it's actually absolutely perfect if you got about this is 45, 55. It's probably more like about 48, oh. 55, you know, or 50, you know, somewhere around there. But the neat part about it, so you got just a little more weight in the back, so it's like a Porsche. It's actually okay. a little bit better than a Porsche because the Porsche is a little more heavy on the yeah, ASN. Yeah. So you're between a VET, a GT, I mean the, the weight ratio is right there. And it's absolutely perfect. Now the other thing is, that's a pretty light for this car. Mm -hmm. This car has you know full interior, stereo, air conditioning, 21 gallon tank. It's steel and aluminum, um, the wheels, you know, big brakes, big wheels. So. It's not the lightest car in the world, but all the weight is, again, about five inches off the ground. And it's in the center of the car. So the car really handles, um, it's really stout, and it just holds up, you know, there's no problem with it. Another interesting thing I can show you is, you can take this car, you can jack it right there, and lift all three wheels off the ground, and there's no flex in it. So. Wow. <laughs> wow. So that's saying something because a lot of the times that chassis chassis can have a little bit of flex. No, our chassis, the deal of our chassis is you need a chassis, you need to do the same thing. Our chassis is designed so you do not need a roll bar to liberate the strength of the car. All the strength is in the chassis. It's already there. All the weight is down on the ground. It's kind of a different concept. A lot of people don't really get it right off the hand mm -hmm. you know, when we first talk about it until they drive the car or they experience. Get out and actually feel. Yeah, they feel how soft the cars are and why isn't it twisting, why isn't it creaking. 